Hello, everyone. This is Johnny. Welcome back to my Nasdaq YouTube channel. So, in this episode, I'm gonna introduce a software which I found from GitHub, a list. So, basically, a list is a fileless program support multiple storages, such as some、um, Google Drive, local storage, OneDrive, SMB, FTP, SFTP, and others as well. The other advanced features, such as file preview (PDF), Office document, video and audio. Especially for the videos, it supports more format than others. In my previous videos, I introduced other similar software, such as、uh, Go Index, GD Index, those kind of software to list Google Drive. Or one manager to list the one drive. You can find out all those previous videos from this video's description. And also, I have blog post for at least this program I introduced today. So you will see more related software there. As mentioned. This software has a lot of advantage, but one of the advantage I like to introduce is the easy deployment. If you look at their document side, you will find out their documentation is very detailed for the installation. There are different types of installation method. I like to use in Docker, just one command we can get it done, which is this video going to introduce. And show you the process. And also, this project is still on the active maintenance. So let also keep updating and keep patching it, give release more features. So that's another reason why I introduce this comparing to other software. The authors not updating that often. Now let's start it. As mentioned before, a list documentation website give you very detailed instruction how to install this software. There are different types methods to install this software based on your needs. So if you have VPS, so you can use one click script to install it, or you can do manual installation, download the code. And then start the server. The easiest way, from my point, is using the Docker. But you need to have a Docker environment. If you don't have it, you can watch my other videos to get a free VPS, install free Docker. That will much easier for you to use Docker to install this software. If you don't have anything. Uh, you still can use this cloud platform, such as Koyap, Render, Heroku, to to install this software on it. Of course, there are some limitations there, but you still be able to run them for your testing purpose. If you prefer run it from the source, you can build the front end and the back end from the code downloaded from the GitHub page. The all necessary steps are listing here. The last step is um, if you have reverse proxy, you prefer to use in your own custom domain URL to access it. The reverse proxy settings are configured here. Let's try use Docker. I'm gonna use my favorite play with Docker website to deploy it and do demo for this video. So play with Docker, you need to have an account. But as long as you have an email address, you should be able to get an account without problem. Log in, then you need to create your new instance. In this new instance, Docker Docker Compose both installed it. So you don't have to worry about patching the system, update it, 
install Docker and Docker Compose. Only thing you need to do is get the Docker run command. Just copy this release version. Or if you want to try developer version, that also possible using this command. Pull it from different repository. For now, we just um, copy paste the command. Control Shift V to paste command in. So again, in play with Docker, Control C, Control V doesn't work properly, but uh, you should be able to Control Shift V to paste. Control plus insert to copy. So just uh, probably ten seconds, the um, image was downloaded, and then the Docker was created up and running. So that's how simple, how easy it is. It's even not one minute, just a couple of seconds. Then the Docker is up and running on a port 5244. So 5244 port. So the advantage to use Play with Docker is you don't even need to think about the firewall rule to open this port for your cloud VPS or thing, those kind of things. Don't need to think about security. Um, you can just throw the command in and then open port from here. 5244. So right away, you will be able to see the web page. So since we haven't configured any storage for our project, then it's empty. So that's why it's saying fail to get a storage, can find storage with raw path. It's powered by a list, and then there's a login button at the end of screen page. So you need to input your username and password. Username always at the main, and then password. Um, we need to get it from our Docker. So we can see the log output for the admin information. So we can go back to our play with Docker and we're going to paste the command in so we will see the output. You will see the password. As mentioned, if you want to copy this password, you have to use control insert command. And then I'm pasting here. Login. We don't need to save the password, but we are logged in here, it shows manage. So now our Docker app is running and we are able to log in to our admin page. Then we're gonna start to do some uh, storage account mounting. We're gonna start to mount some storages into this application. So mount in those storage, you may think it's going to be very hard to do. Actually, it's very simple, easy to do, as long as you know the right way to get those fresh token, client ID, client secret. Go to the storage page. You can start to add. Here are all cloud or local storage, we're going to support it. One thing I would like to start is always starting from local. By the way, if you want to see the documentation about how to mount those storages, you can go back to at least documentation to find out more information. So we're going to start with a local account. So mount pass, we're going to put a root here. That's the only thing you need to do. So here is a root folder pass. So if you want to list the root folder, starting from your root folder of your Linux, then you can put a root here. And if, if you want to just start with a subfolder, then you can start with subfolder. In our case, as a demo, so we start with root for the path. So we're going to do add. Now we're going to go back to check it. Go to the home. Right away, we see 
the root path here. That's the root folder for our this Linux Docker. You can see the dot Docker environment file is there. You can go through all folders and find out what we have there. So that's how simple, how easy we can mount the local storage. Our next step is to mount a cloud drive into this a list app. So we're going to use uh, Google Drive as an example. So we can put the uh, GD as a name for the mount pass. And we also need a couple of more information like root folder ID, refresh token, client ID, client secret. So client ID and the client secret already auto filled in. This is like public client ID, public client secret. Usually it will not have a problem but for the performance. I strongly suggest you get your own client ID and own client secret. We still need one more thing, which is refresh token. So based on the documentation, it says you can use this website. Um, so it's also using default client ID, the public one, client secret, public one. So strongly suggest using your own. If you have your own client ID, client secret, you can put in here. After that, it's going to ask you to get the code and then get the refresh token. So let's try to see if it's working. Unfortunately, recently Google changed their policy, so our Chrome won't be able to request this code anymore directly from the website. So the web UI won't work in, so as you can see, access blocked. There's no way you can get it from, um, from this, this website anymore. So what we can do to get the refresh token, which is you can install our Chrome on your local windows and then launch Chrome authorization command and to get the code and then refresh token. So that will be different topic. So I assume you know how to do it. If you don't know, you can watch some of my previous videos and the previous um, blog post for how to get the refresh token. So to make the video simple and short, so in this uh, video, I'm gonna just use in one simple Google Drive folder as example. So this is gonna be our root ID. We're gonna copy into our configuration root folder ID. We are not gonna mount the root folder. We are gonna mount the subfolder. Subfolder ID which is going to be root folder ID in this mount. And we also need a client ID and the client secret, which I already generated. So I'm going to just directly copy in. So I have my own client ID, my own client secret, and the refresh token. So I already generate from my local installed Acron instance. So I'm going to just directly copy them in as well. So you need three things again, client ID, client secret. You can use public one, but you also need to generate your own refresh token to access your Google Drive root folder ID as we filled in here. So add it in. Once you have lost information, you add it in, then you should be able to go back to home folder and list in all things you have in our Google Drive. So you can go to Docs, you can see our documents, as we can see from here. So that's all I want to present to you. Of course, this program can do much more than this. Uh, I hope you can get a chance to explore it. But for this video, that's all for today. Thank you for watching. Please 
give me a thumb up if you like this video. Also, subscribe this channel to support me if you haven't subscribed. It. See you in my next video. Thank you.